Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we will show you how to fix the error code 127 when you are trying to flash Magis zip file using a custom or OSP recovery for routing purpose. So as of now, I am using the Catalyst OS on my Poco F4 and I want to root my phone. So for that, as you might be aware, the easiest approach to root any Android phone is by simply doing a Magis side load via that custom recovery. So I'm using the Catalyst OS and the Catalyst OS uses a Lineage OS based custom recovery. So currently I'm in the Lineage OS based recovery as you could see. So if I now go to apply update and choose apply from ADB, I am now in the ADB side load mode. So if I open CMD window inside platform tool folder, for example, let me type in CMD inside the platform tool folder and hit enter. So with this, if I now type in ADB devices, you could see that I'm getting a side load keyword. So this signifies that my phone is now in the ADB side load mode and for routing a custom ROM, the generic approach is to simply side load the Magis zip file. As you can see, I already have the Magis zip file and my phone is in the side load mode. So in hindsight, I only need to side load the Magis zip and my phone should be rooted. But that will not happen with this ROM. So if I type in ADB side load Magis dot zip and hit enter, let me show you my phone as well. To keep a track on my phone if I now hit enter the side loading will start but it will fail straight away and as you could see we are getting the recovery error file error status 127 so this is because it cannot access the state file and in short this custom ROM and apart from this there are a few other custom ROM that does not support simply doing a side load of matches to obtain root so for those custom ROM there are two other approaches that you could use to root those ROM the shorter approach is using the EWRP recovery or the Orange Fox recovery and the longer approach is by using the boot.img file from the payload.bin file. The EWRP is the shorter approach but it's not available for all the phones whereas the payload.bin file is a longer approach but it's universally accepted across all the Android phone. So first of all I'll show you this universal method. So with that in mind let's get started. First and foremost you have to Download the same ROM which is currently installed onto your phone. So you could verify the same from the about phone or the build number section. So download the same ROM which is there on your phone and extract them onto your PC. Upon extraction, you will get a couple of files. Out of these files, we only need the payload.bin file. So let's copy this file and next up you have to download the fastboot enhanced tool. I have given the link to this tool in my guide. You could refer to my guide and grab hold of the tool from here so just a minute this is my guide i will link the guide in the description so download this tool from here and extract them onto your pc once you have got the tool you now have to copy the payload.bin file from the custom rom and transfer it to the fastboot enhance folder as you can see from here now we'll have to launch the fastboot enhance tool so open its exe file and then we will extract the boot.img file from the payload.bin so now go to payload dumper Hit the browse button and then you have to select the payload.bin file. So just select it and click on open. The file will now be loaded. Once that is done, go to the partition tab and just select the boot partition. Boot IMG file and click on extract image. Now choose a location. So let's choose the desktop and click OK. The boot IMG file will now be extracted. We could also use the Python command to get this job done, but that is somewhat complicated. And using the Python command, it will extract all the partition file. But as of now, we only need the boot.img file. That is why we are only using the fastboot enhanced tool and not the Python command. So once you have got this message, just hit the OK button. And with this, we have got the boot IMG file. So let me show you this is the stock boot IMG file of the custom ROM, which is unpatched. So let's now boot our phone to the OS. Do keep in mind that once you have got the error 127, now you should go back and Tap on reboot system now. You might get an error message that completely normal. Just tap on reboot system now and your phone will now boot to the OS. So we will now have to proceed ahead and patch this boot IMG file via matches and then we will flash it onto our phone to obtain root. So let's proceed ahead and rectify this issue. So our phone should now boot to the OS in a matter of few seconds. So let's wait for a time frame. In the meantime, you could refer to my guide and download the matches app. At the time of recording, the latest version is 26.1. So download the APK file from here and send the file onto your phone. So let me do that as well. If your phone is not visible on your PC, 
So go to file manager app over on your PC and if your phone is not visible over here, then it's not an issue. Simply expand the charging disk device section and choose file transfer. And with this, your phone should not be vis visible on your PC. So expand your phone from here and make sure to transfer the Magis APK file over here. I've already done the transfer. There are a few other files. I will explain you the importance and using of this file as when required. As of now, you only need the Magis APK file to place the file onto your phone. Once that is done, let's now proceed ahead with the next step. So first off, you have to launch the Magis app. So open the file app onto your phone and then you have to install the Magis app. So it will only take a few seconds. Let's install the Magis app. Once that is done, you will now have to transfer the boot IMG file which you have extracted from the custom ROM or the payload.bin file. So copy the boot IMG file from here and paste the file onto your phone. So let's do that as well. It's the unpatched boot IMG file of the custom ROM which is, which is installed onto our phone. So let's now transfer this boot IMG file onto our phone. Once that is done, we will now patch this file using Magisk. So open the Magisk app, then tap on install next to Magisk. Then choose select and patch a file and then select your phone and now choose the boot IMG file and then tap on let's go. Magisk will now patch the boot IMG file and place the file inside the downloads folder. So let's access this folder from our PC itself. So let us see. So as you could see, let's verify the file name. It ends with fx7qp. So they both have the same file name. So copy the patch boot IMG file and place it inside the platform tool folder on your PC. So let's paste the file here. So with this we have got the patch file and now your next course of action is to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For booting your phone to fast boot mode, you have to bring up the settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Now go back, go to system, go to developer option and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. Once that is done, open CMD window inside platform tool folder and now type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and with this your phone should now boot to fast boot mode in a matter of few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead so our phone should now boot to the fast boot mode in a few seconds let's just wait and the fast boot screen might vary depending on the custom ROM that you are using or your phone so i'm using a poco f4 so this is the custom ROM screen as you could see from here. So once your phone is now in the fast boot mode, we could now boot our phone using the Magisk Patch Boot IMG file. So for the ease of convenience, let's rename the file to something shorter. I am renaming it to Magisk underscore patch underscore boot. So let's now boot our phone using this patch file. So first off, type in fast boot devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fastboot drivers. I have made a guide on the same. You could refer to my guide and install the fastboot drivers. Once that is done, you should now boot your phone to the via the Magis patch boot IMG file. So for that, type in fastboot boot and the name of the file which is magis underscore patch underscore boot dot IMG and hit enter. And your phone should now boot to the Patch boot IMG file and it will take only a few seconds. Always keep in mind to use the boot command and never flash the file. Because if something is wrong with the patch file and you have used the flash command, then your phone might end up in a boot loop or a saw break state. On the other hand, if you have just used the boot command and something is wrong with the patch file, then a simple restart will rectify all the issues. So always use the boot command. With that said, let's now unlock our phone and launch the Magisk app. And now you might get a prompt on your phone. So let's verify the same. For the first time boot up, it might take a few additional seconds. So as of now, since we have used the boot command, our phone is rooted just for one time usage. So we will now have to make the root permanent. For that, tap on install next to Magis and select direct install. Then tap on let's go. And with this, Magis will now flash the new boot IMG file. And with this, the root should now be permanent. So let's wait for the flashing. It could take around 10 to 15 seconds at the very max. Now tap on reboot. And this time around, your phone should now boot to the patch boot IMG file. So as I was saying, you should always be on a safer side and use the boot command. Because if you are using an incorrect patch file or if the patch file 
boot version does not match with the build number which is currently installed onto our phone and if something is wrong with the boot file and you have simply used the boot command then upon a sim a, the next restart the patch boot img file will be replaced by the stock boot img file and your phone will be back to the os and it's always the recommended approach but that said let's now launch the magisk app and as you could see we have now obtained permanent root now there is nothing more left to do let's now verify the root as well so for that i'll be using an app which is known as root checker you could install the app from play store and verify the root so let me launch the root checker app and install it so tap on open and tap on allow and agree now tap on verify root and as you could see we are now getting the magic prompt so tap on grant and with this we have obtained root so this was the longer but the generic method of routing our phone if you get an error 1 to 7 this method is applicable across all the android phone irrespective of the rom which you are using or your android phone version or the android version on on the other hand the only drawback with this method is that it's quite lengthy so there exists one more method which is quite shorter to carry out and that that method is using the Reblo RP recovery. The only drawback of this method is that it's not applicable across all the phones because the custom recovery is not valid for all the phones. But in case your phone has a TW RP recovery, then it's highly recommended that you use this recovery. So let me show you how this could be done. For that, first and foremost, let me unroot my phone. It will take just a few seconds. So let's just wait. The Magisk app will now uninstall itself and my phone should now reboot to the OS in a matter of few seconds. And after that, I'll show you now how to root your custom ROM using the TWRP recovery. So if your phone does have a TWRP or in Fox or which black custom recovery, then it's recommended to use this method. The only reason why I'm showing this method is at the end is because TWRP is not applicable across all the phones. Moreover, the newer phones which are launched with Android 12 or higher versions, you might not even get TWRP. As of now, only the Redmi, Xiaomi and Poco phones are having TWRP. The rest such as the OnePlus and the Pixels don't have this recovery. So for them, they will have to use the payload.bin method as shown earlier. For the rest of the phone, they could now use the TWRP method. So first and foremost, if I verify root, as you could see, my phone is not rooted. So it's not rooted and there is no magic cap. So I'll now show you how to root your phone using the TWRP method. So first and foremost, you have to download the recovery file onto your platform tools folder and as of now i will not permanently flash the recovery because we could only use the recovery for one time usage and our task stands complete as well so first off download the recovery img file and place it inside the platform tools folder now open cmd window enable usb debugging onto your phone and then type in adb reboot bootloader and your phone should now boot to the fast boot mode make sure that you, the bootloader is unlocked on your phone it's quite it's quite obvious because you are using a custom ROM so that the bootloader will already be unlocked. But just to reiterate, make sure that it's unlocked beforehand. Now, once you are in the fast boot mode, you could now boot your phone to the TWRP recovery for the ease of convenience. Let me rename the file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to TWRP. And now you could use the fast boot boot TWRP.img. If in your case, this command fails, then you could also use the passport flash recovery, recovery.img command to directly flash the recovery file to the recovery partition. In my case, in POCO F4, there is no recovery partition, so I have to use the passport boot command. Moreover, I don't want a permanent recovery, so I'm just using a boot command. So as you could see, my phone is now in the PWRP recovery. So now, your next course of action is to download the magic file. You could Grab hold from my guide, you could download either the APK or the zip file. By, by default, you will get an APK file. You will have to convert the APK to zip. Let me show you how that could be done. You just have to do a rename, but still, let me show you. So, if you go to the official GitHub page of Magis, you will get a file something like this. So, all you have to do is right click on the APK and then just change the APK to dot zip and hit enter. You will get a prompt. Just click on yes, and with this, Magisk has now become flashable zip file. However, from now onwards, there is no need to change the extension to zip. Nowadays, you could easily flash the APK file as well using the TWRP recovery only. So, let me show you. You could flash both the APK or the zip, that does not matter. 
So we are already flashing zip for ages. Let me now show you how to flash the APK file using PWRP. So once you are on this recovery, go to install. And now, as you could see, I will be flashing the Magis APK file. It's the APK file as you could see from here. So let me simply perform what I thought to flash it. And as you could see, PWRP is now able to flash the APK file as well. The flashing has now started and it will take only a few seconds. So let's just wait for the flashing to complete. And once that is done, we might have to carry out one more additional task, but that will be taken care of by Magisk itself. So once the flashing is done, tap on reboot and now select system and your phone should now reboot to the OS. As of now, the Magisk app has been installed in the back end. In the front end, we might still not have the app. So we will now have to install the Magisk app in the front end as well. For that, we will be using the same Magisk APK file which we have flashed onto our phone using the Apple recovery. So we will now install the same APK file as you install any app on your phone. So let's launch the file manager app and let's now install the Magisk app onto our phone. So we will be using the same Magisk app. This is the app. Tap on continue and hit install. And with this, the Magisk app is now installed. So now tap on open and it will take a few seconds to open. This is just the one time delay from subsequent times. It will not take that much longer or you could also wait for a few seconds for the Magisk app to be installed. As of now, you are getting the shell icon. This means that the Magisk, Magisk is installed in the back end. In the front end, it's still not installed. So let's try to install the Magisk once again in the front end using the Magisk app. So tap on continue and now tap on update. And with this, the Magisk has now been installed. Let me show you the app icon would have been changed. As you could see, we have now got the Magisk app. So open it and you might not get one more prompt. So just tap on OK and then select direct install recommended and tap on let's go. And Magisk will now patch and flash the new boot IMG file. Once then tap on reboot and your phone will now reboot to the rooted OS. On some phones, it might ask to carry out one more task that will take around five to six seconds. So I'll show you that as well. If it asks in the meantime, what we have done till now, if we booted our phone to the WRP recovery, if you want, you could flash the recovery as well. But in our case, we simply use the fastboot boot command because we still want to use the AOSP recovery itself, which came with the ROM. Once we were in the custom ROM, so just a minute, let me pause the steps and I will show you the next step. So our phone is now booted to the OS. Let's now launch the Magisk app. And with this, as you could see, we have now obtained root. We could now verify the root as well. So tap on the root checker app and tap on verify root. As you could see, we have got the Magisk prompt. So tap on grant. And with this, our phone is now rooted by Magisk. So if you launch the Magisk app and go to super user, you could see that the app has been given Magisk request. So just to repeat, there are a couple of methods. If you are flashing the Magisk zip file doing an ADB side load via the custom recovery, which came with the custom ROM, such as a lineage recovery or the pixel recovery, and you are getting an error 1 to 7, then that custom recovery did, or the custom ROM does not support the magic side load. So in that case, you could use two methods. The first method is using the fastboot enhanced tool, then extracting the payload.bin file using the fastboot enhanced tool, getting the boot IMG file, patching the boot IMG file via matches, and then flashing it using the fastboot command. The next and the shorter method involves simply flashing the Magisk APK file using the PWRP recovery and that would also root your phone. So guys, on that note, I round off this video. All the links to this guide are given in the description. You can refer to those guides anytime you want. And with that said, I round off this video. If you have any queries, do leave a note in the comment section. And guys, please like this video and subscribe to channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.